the three of you have actually contributed a lot um, writing COVID-19 summaries for Immunopedia. So I just wanted to know what was your experience writing the summaries and what also motivated you beyond the ask for help that I sent to actually take part in writing the summary? Well, I believe that this ongoing pandemic is currently the most important scientific topic. Um, it's trending worldwide. So um, as we know that this virus is a novel virus and uh, I felt that I'm so curious to learn more about this virus and to understand uh, the invading mechanisms of this virus, um, to fill the gaps of knowledge. And uh, of course, uh, after when you understand the, uh, these mechanisms, it might help in therapies whatsoever. And add to that, uh, that I wanted to summarize these uh, topics for uh, scientists, young scientists from other disciplines to make it easy for them to gather this information and to follow up the COVID research. Yeah, thank you. It was very valuable. And it was a, a lot of content that was being published at the same time to keep track yeah. of. Well, I've been writing for Immunopedia for a while now. Uh, and uh, it's it's always interesting to try to summarize a study in in a language that many people can read, not just people from your background. Uh, so when COVID happened, and you know, it's it's as as Nafesa says, it's a new virus. Many people in the community, or, uh, in you know, at work, don't exactly know how viruses come to happen. So there was a lot of, you know, news and uh, rumors and theories uh, out there. And I felt as a scientist, I, I have a moral obligation to, to, to put out the correct information. Uh, so around that time, like in, in Kenya, those calls, media calls for scientists to go on TV and radio to educate the public, or clarify some of government decisions, you know. Uh, I, I got such calls, uh, but I, I, I felt a bit media shy <laughs> so, to, to be out there in the public because sometimes you might say something and there's a backlash, you know, there's public yeah. backlash. But I felt comfortable writing, you know, uh, and, and putting it on Immunopedia, then sharing you know, the links to my friends and, you know, people on social media. Uh, so, so that was kind of a safe space for me to, you know, get to get the knowledge myself. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of output uh, from labs all over the world. Uh, and also, you know, share uh, the correct information, even though it may not seem correct uh, everywhere. Uh, but just put out the, the true science out there so that people can appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is very important because I, I understand you completely that like it's easier to be a pen than to be a voice and to be a face. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes someone would say something and there'll be so much backlash. It's not because they're wrong. It's because people are like, whatever you're saying doesn't make sense. And there's no way. And like at the beginning, there was a lot of fake news, a lot of conspiracy theories around COVID-19. And I totally get you that at some point, especially as a junior scientist, you don't feel like you're at that level to be in front of the camera and be like, yeah, guys, this is why X, Y, and Z is happening. You know, it is much easier to be a pen. Like initially, I wasn't really comfortable being a pen. I preferred to speak and like to, <laughs> to have conversations and like interview people. The pen writing ship, I'm just like, but I do it because it's my job. And I've actually learned over the years that I've actually gotten better at it, how to write summaries, how to read really quickly. And just like you said, we need to be able to communicate our research outside the scientific community. And that's great. This pandemic is something new. Like you only read it in histo history about the Spanish flu and stuff. No, you're actually living it right now, which is a bit scary. 
but it was very interesting to see other researchers and new types of techniques that they're using to do this research and how all the scientists are all coming together to find a vaccine. And it would be a good uh, practice to read and summarize which I apply to my protocols and literature reviews. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really good. Yeah, it's actually amazing how so many scientists have come together under the COVID-19 banner. I just hope that solidarity can extend to other aspects of um, infectious diseases or just health-related research. Do you have any advice for any early career scientists like coping with the pandemic and also in future um, with working from home and how you manage to have a work and work life balance? I know that we we are going through a very hard time and uh, I know that um, cancelled or suspended, suspended research for many young scientists is like a big thing, a very hectic thing to them. And uh, of course, continuing to learn remotely is a very big challenge. To me, <laughs> I, I found it very difficult to follow up all these calls and Zoom meetings and, you know, it is very hard. And of course, you know, failing to complete a project, um, it will affect some people if they want to start or seek a job. So, so it is difficult. To me, it was difficult in, uh, because last year or this year, sorry, this year, I wanted to start my PhD. So I was preparing everything and, uh, and suddenly, <laughs> everything, the plan changed totally. So I know how, how does it feel, but my advice is try to be very positive. <laughs> and uh, this time will pass sooner or later. And uh, it's only temporary and, uh, and we are meant to survive <laughs> and adapt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll definitely come out much stronger after this COVID-19 pandemic, yeah, whether we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> when they were forced to, it will happen. <laughs> yes, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So just try to be optimistic. It will, uh, time will pass. Yes, no, I totally agree with you. I think that this is this is the time that uh, my friends and family have come to know my work better because I've been I've been, you know, like at home. Uh, usually, you just say I'm going to work. Uh, but now you, you've got to work together in the house. So, uh, like my wife would ask, so what exactly are you doing today? <laughs> you know, so I'm like, oh, I'm doing this just statistical analysis. What are you analyzing? <laughs> so I've, I've come to get down to the best, explaining the basics of, of my work uh, to 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 someone in a way they can understand, someone who's totally not in science. Uh, and I, I think that's a good thing because it helps you also understand your work in a clearer perspective um, and, and also try to uh, see how it fits with life. Because I, I think that as PhD students, we, we see ourselves as doing science and some of that science may look uh, too remote from life. But these are actually questions of life that we are answering. And it's, it's, it's good uh, to come to a place that we can understand that I'm actually doing life while working. Uh, and answering questions of life. That are positive for me. Um, I, I think that uh, the other thing I would say is... Uh, it's, it's been also a time of being challenged mentally. Uh, when other people ask you, so what's DNA, you know? And uh, frankly, they don't know, right? So when you say, oh, Bill Gates talked about a DNA vaccine, what does that even mean, you know? Uh, and as, as young scientists, we're in a place that we understand these things and we can help others understand. Uh, usually in other times of life, there's not many questions about our work, but this pandemic provided an opportunity for us to be challenged as a scientific community to come clean and clear about what we do 
and what we 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 understand uh, so uh, i would my advice to early uh, other other young scientists is understand your work but uh, be able to talk about it more openly and genuinely we may not be able to say everything uh, but we can uh, explain the basics in a way that the community understands and i've seen that some of my friends who uh, have sat down with or been on a call with they they come out and you know are like yeah that actually makes sense so that video i watched does not you know reflect the the the, the true situation so um i i am that's that's my encouragement like say be positive about it um we usually get frustrated in the lab when like you lose cells in culture right it's like a <laughs> situation <laughs> but but this is like a real life frustrating situation you know that everyone is in and we can appreciate that some people lost income probably other scientists as well yeah uh, and they are negatively affected uh, and but we can still be positive about it and say we shall overcome no that is great and also i liked what you said that you can explain as best as you can and it's also all right to say i don't know we don't have yes. the answers for everything <laughs> but also i had to tell somebody like they're asking me questions i was like honestly i don't know they're like how do you not know i'm like i'm also learning <laughs> i'm also learning at the pace you're learning the only advantage is that i can maybe understand faster because i know immunology and i can question more to get a better understanding but i'm also in this phase of i don't know what's happening today this is what's happening Hydroclo hydroxychloroquine was like, yes, it will work. Two months later, mm -mm, actually, not on severe patients. They're like, how? I'm like, this is how science works. Yeah. We think it will work. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes we have to really try hard to understand why it doesn't work. And then we go and tell you. And that's why it takes a bit of time. But we don't have time mm -hmm. now. And we're giving you information as we get. And we do have that moral obligation as scientists yes some people can decide for themselves which is totally up to them but if you can understand something you should also make somebody else at ease by helping them also understand and that's also some very valuable scientific advice not specifically to COVID-19 but to any other immunology research that we're doing we're answering questions for life as you said okay we're not just focusing on the test tube question it's, these are life questions we're answering <laughs> But thank you guys so much for taking time to have this conversation. Thank you.